experiences um, to really make sure that we are uh, meeting the needs of our families. Um, and again, thinking about access uh, and opportunity and exposure, um, especially during this time to, to offer new experiences. So thinking about some of the barriers that uh, previously um, existed and you know when we were uh, when we outside was open uh, as my friends would say um, is that parents didn't have time to attend physical meetings so thinking about parent teacher conferences thinking about uh, PTA meetings and things like that um, just schedules in general didn't align themselves um, to you know families aligning to the school schedule also uh, a, a big barrier uh, was expenses because we know that if you if you provide food, people will come, right? But we also know that um, providing food uh, presents an expense for, for schools or, or partners um, and organizations. So there were some barriers in place. And so what I, you know, kind of, again, um, believing that we all have to think of uh, this really kind of unfortunate situation um, and see the hope and see the joy of it, we have to look at it as an opportunity, right? And so now we don't have those barriers. Of course, we have kind of a new set of barriers. Um, but, you know, in terms of having access to people, um, there is a lot more access to people. Um, you know, when you call people now, usually, you know, everybody's home for the most part, they pick up the phone. Um, even in terms of access, I was telling somebody the other day um, and kind of having these meetings where we're now, you know, being able to kind of get a window into each other's homes and kind of that, you know, private space, all of that's gone out of the window. Um, so how can we, you know, again, look at the, the pandemic opportunity to really move uh, what was previously just parents being involved um, to them really, you know, being engaged, um, highly engaged. So I want to take a, a look at a video. Let's see if this will play. Um, and this is just to to lighten lighten it up. You know, when we talk about COVID, talk about the pandemic. Of course, again, um, we can feel really um, heavy um, about you know what is is happening. So um, I'm not even sure this is the right video. Let me see. We had a little issue this morning. Let me play. Let me go back. I want to make sure I'm actually. Yeah, this is it. Um, the right video. But this is. <laughs> hopefully uh, to lighten the mood um, and talk a little bit about oh, one, two, three, three, four, four, four. I had it ready, of course, um, but to talk about the different types of families, uh, types of parents uh, that we may encounter. Um, so let's see. No, that is not it. Give me one second. Sorry. No. All right, I may have to come, here it is, <laughs> come back to this. Okay, so again, this is uh, just to give us a little, a little laugh about the different uh, types of parents that we might encounter, which is gonna lead us into our first strategy, uh, which is knowing our families. Oh, David? Oh, oh no, he, he would, would never, never do anything, anything like that. that. You, you must, must have, have been mistaken, mistaken with another, another student. student. I'm, I'm sure. sure. <laughs> okay, okay, but my, my thing, thing is this. Why don't you give her homework on Monday? Then turn around and give him more homework on, on Tuesday. Tuesday. Like, like, what's, what's your, your point? point? Furthermore, Furthermore, if you, you saw him giving his homework on Monday, on Monday why, why would you give him another assignment? It's like, how can he pass? You don't keep drowning him in homework. Of course, of course she's, she's passing your class. class. We've hired tutors. tutors. She's, she's very, very attentive. attentive. You know, you know she's, she's very, very smart, smart for her age. age. You know, we, we knew, knew that she would just flourish. We knew. We, we knew right away. away. From, From the moment I had her, her I saw her, her and I said, said this, this kid is going to make straight A's. No, no, no. I'm listening. Keep talking. Keep talking. My Facebook is asking her. She did what? Oh, oh, you don't, you don't even, even have, have to finish, finish telling, telling me because, because it's, it's not going to happen again. again. Ever, 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 ever. It's, it's not going to ever happen again. again. As long as I'm on this earth, it will never happen again. You don't even have to worry about it because, because I'm going to handle it, okay? okay. Uh, on the oh, who no, she, she thinks I am, she knows. I didn't raise her to do all of this. But it's okay. Like I said, I'm going to take care of it. You got anything else you want to talk about? 
Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Did you want to wait for her father to come? Um, we, we want to get all of this as a unit. unit. As, as you know, I'm going to have married. And, and so we just want to do everything together. So we can just hold off. I mean, she should be here any minute. I am, I am so, so sorry, sorry for my, my tardiness. I'm um, on like two hours late. Is she still doing? All right. So hopefully, let me get back here, share. <laughs> um, hopefully, you, you all are laughing. I can't see your faces um, because I'm looking at the presentation. But um, again, just wanted to to lighten the mood and uh, now jump into um, our first strategy, which is really to uh, know our families, right? Um, and and that can mean a lot of different things. Um, and so. I'm sure hopefully uh, the video is relatable in some way and that you saw some uh, parent or family um, that you may have encountered um, at your school. And I'm sure that that video now could even have uh, more of a twist um, with all of the, the different, again, challenges and just uh, things that have come up as a result of being a parent at home um, during COVID and homeschooling and still trying to work and all of those things. So these are just some questions um, again, and there are a number of questions um, that can be asked when we really talk about um, knowing our families. But uh, if we are to create uh, things that are going to be events, activities um, that are going to be engaging for, for families, we really wanna start from um, knowing as much as we can about them. So it can be cultural information. Um, it can be, you know, based upon what their interests are, um, their background, of course, um, even what we are experiencing now, some people will tell you is trauma. Um, and so outside of this, there are many uh, families I know that we work with both in Baltimore and DC um, that have experienced a, you know, different sort of trauma, whether it's again, violence or drug abuse um, and thinking about that as you, uh, create uh, your experiences for your families. Just knowing who's at home, um, what the dynamic is, um, and then also really wanting to make clear uh, what your role is and, and how you can support. Um, thinking about, again, what your family's uh, interests are, but then also moving that and taking that to another level um, of inspiring them, right? We don't just want them to be interested um, in participating. We really want to, again, this is a, a time uh, where people need and want to be inspired um, and, and hopeful and, and filled with joy. So really thinking about um, what matters to them, um, giving them even the opportunity. Um, and we've done this, uh, you know, giving family services surveys um, to figure out what types of uh, opportunities they want um, that are going to, you know, really speak to their interests um, and their needs. So um, thinking about, again, just how you can connect uh, your, what you're creating to your family's interests, and then also um, pairing and connecting families um, that have uh, similar interests. So again, one of the ways that you can do that is uh, through a survey. Um, and one of the big things that we focus a lot on in our organization um, is being culturally relevant. Um, that has been, you know, sort of an education buzzword that's been made popular probably in the last decade. Uh, but really getting to, you know, the nuts and bolts of that again, and going back to knowing your families, knowing what they're dealing with, um, and even thinking about their experiences or some of the conversations that have come out um, as we've talked to families, what their experience was like uh, growing up and in, in school. And that sometimes, again, going back to those barriers uh, can be the very thing that keeps them from um, coming to, you know, parent, uh, parent teacher conferences or to the school um, because their experience uh, was so negative, uh, you know, growing up in school. So really thinking about how, again, we can uh, take the things that they're interested in, have the families be involved um, as you are creating uh, your family engagement activities. Um, I am going to skip this just for time purposes, um, and we can come back to it if if uh, we have time at the end. Um, but I want to try to make sure we get through um, the different strategies and, and a couple of things that I want us to be able to do at the end. So the second strategy is to ask uh, questions, right? And, and creativity is all about, um, as we're all artists, um, I'm sure, in our own rights, uh, on this call. 
Um, creativity is about asking the questions. So how can I do something? Um, why should I do something? Um, what would happen if I do this? And I think, again, I heard somebody mention, um, you know, we have a small team and working with your small team or even your large team, you have to have uh, people at your table as you are creating um, these family engagement opportunities that um, are willing to ask questions and sometimes ask the tough questions. Um, but, you know, I think that again, as we are, you know, in meeting rooms or, you know, uh, via uh, Zoom or, or Google Meet or whatever the preferred uh, platform is that we're meeting and connecting um, with each other on, that we have to just kind of continue to push um, each other and ask the questions maybe that no one else is asking. Um, and again, questions leading to more questions and really digging down um, and taking a deeper dive into what uh, the family's needs are um, and what their interests are and then figuring out how about this, you know, and, and what if that doesn't work, then again, asking more questions so that we can get to experiences um, that are really going to help to be transformative um, for our families. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, did somebody say something? Oh no, sorry. I was just saying, yeah, I was. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. And please feel free um, at any time oh, to stop me. No, no, it's fine. Um, this is, I, I know every, for everybody uh, that has been doing meetings and presentations and all of this is such a, a weird and different, I should say, um, space to be in because we're used to having that interpersonal communication and, you know, high, you know, uh, smiles and head nods and things. So this can, um, this format, of course, can be a little intimidating. Um, so I'm glad that you were amening. <laughs> that helps me to know because I can't see y'all's faces. If I go to the other tab, then I, I can see your faces. So thank you. Um, so the, the third strategy is to uh, be creative with space. Um, and, and what do I mean by that? So again, this is really specific to what we've been dealing with um, as it relates to COVID um, and some of the, the uh, activities that we've created and some of the ways that we found um, to engage with our families um, is thinking about the space that they're in. Um, and so one of the kind of challenges that we'll talk about a little bit later, but one of the challenges that we did early on when I think we were all kind of wrap, trying to wrap our minds around, okay, we're stuck in the house um, with our families. You know, what is this going to look like? How are we going to survive? Um, we did an engagement activity with our families about how to recreate their space. Um, and so we had, you know, uh, again, a survey, I think we had a, a kind of a convening such as this one, um, where families talked about individuals in the family may talk about uh, what they wanted the space to look like, um, thinking about words that they connected to their space, like uh, peace, um, or, you know, for someone else, like my daughter who's 13, she will want her space to be fun. Um, and so we built an activity around taking each person, each member in the family and what their word was, and then thinking about how they could recreate one space um, within their home that represented everybody's words and, and truly was a reflection um, of everyone in the family. Um, you know, oftentimes, you know, People who uh, are the, the adults in the home will have their own bedroom. The kids may have their own bedroom. The kitchen certainly usually belongs to the adults. Um, but really thinking about the living space, right, the common area of the home, particularly, again, during this time when who knew we would be, you know, 10 weeks later, um, kind of still in the house <laughs> with each other. Um, just some ways that we could influence the space. Um, and even thinking beyond the space, thinking about what uh, we talked about, what items were readily available um, to the families that they could also um, utilize to be able to help to recreate um, the space. So um, I think, again, this is just a one uh, way that you can engage with families uh, that we may not be thinking about. Again, that kind of plays on um, you know, this idea or this reality, really not idea um, of being at home and how we can use 
you know, artistic practices and principles. If it's color, I have a friend, I couldn't do this, but her son has uh, painted like a mural um, on his one wall of his bedroom. Um, so that may be the, you know, the opposite end of the spectrum, the very extreme. But I do think there are little simple things that you can do with families. And again, um, have everybody to be included in that. I think that that's a big part of this um, is having everybody who's you know, represented in the family, um, be a part of any of the activities um, and engagement opportunities that you create, you know, from the smallest child in the house um, to the oldest, how can you create things um, that are inclusive of, of everyone? So strategy four uh, is to create with need, interest and empathy in mind. And we talked a little bit already really uh, about interest. Um, I think that again, uh, knowing not only what your families are interested in, um, I think that we really have to be clear and this is changed even um, from what families may have expressed as a need, um, you know, 10 weeks ago uh, to now, what, what the current need is. So I would definitely encourage um, you if there's a way that you are communicating with the families that you serve um, and you haven't kind of surveyed them or, or checked in or whatever that looks like uh, for your particular organization, organization um, to, to do that, you know, uh, you know, again, post COVID, um, because that's one of the things that we found some of the things that families may have expressed as a need previously, um, it's, it's not even, you know, relevant anymore. Um, it, it has become um, something, you know, specific to the circumstances that we're in. And again, one of our kind of practices as an organization is that we always want to be where the need is. We always want to be, um, you know, where the gaps are and trying to fill in those gaps. So I definitely think checking back in uh, with those families is, is important, you know, to really try to uh, determine uh, what, you know, what the need is currently. And then again, um, you know, thinking creatively about how you can meet those needs. And again, we all have to be um, empathetic. This, this has uh, impacted uh, all of us in so many different ways. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, even within one day, sometimes, you know, I'm great and, you know, feeling up and like I said, hopeful and encouraged. And then within that same day, you know, where I am mentally and emotionally has completely um, changed. And so, um, again, just really, if you, again, sometimes this depends on capacity as well. Um, but if there's a way as much as you can interpersonally um, connect with families at this time, even before before we get to kind of the activities and, you know, all of the events and, and things that you may be creating, um, again, that personal connection. Um, folks, I think, are really, um, I, I mean, I know, again, everybody's been following all of these uh, Zoom and now Facebook has a way that you can, you know, connect. I mean, connection has been a really um, kind of a running theme in my mind, uh, you know, based on the, the things that we've experienced over the last 10 weeks and just families uh, connecting more and having family night or people that are, you know, miles away that you may not have, you know, talked to, like checking in with them. So there's something to be said about that connection. Um, and again, just really taking into consideration um, what other people may be experiencing and, and trying to figure out how, again, um, what you do um, and what your organization does uh, can fill, you know, that need and, and really meet people where they are. So just briefly want to touch on some of the things, again, we are by no means an expert, um, but want to share some of the things that we have done um, over, you know, really this is specific to the last uh, 10 weeks and um, since, you know, everything has been shut down and how we've kind of had to rethink and revamp uh, what family engagement as everybody has looks like um, currently. Um, and then I want to just kind of give you an exhaustive list of um, some things that we haven't done um, that maybe we're considering. And then we'll have, um, just checking my time, a little bit of time um, for you to think about, again, creatively for yourself, for your organization that you may be representing, um, what that looks like for you. So 
LTYC is, again, very cultural um, organization, very grassroots, again, wanting to be with the people on the ground, in the community, um, doing the work. Um, we are a young um, organization, so we like to be, you know, hip and trendy um, and do things, uh, you know, that are going to connect um, with folks and individuals. So a couple of things that we've done that I wanted to just share here. Again, um, maybe it's something that you would be interested in doing for your organization, maybe not. Um, but just some some things that we have uh, done that I, I do believe have been successful um, and that we've received some really positive feedback about um, in, in terms of the families and communities that we've connected with. So one thing that we've done that has been really successful and I think is also uh, something to be said about consistency and again, just being able to consistently check in on families um, is that we've had challenges every week. So um, of course, you know, people are on um, online and, and doing, I can't think of the TikTok. Uh, I was getting ready to, I don't know how I could forget, but people have been online doing all these kind of TikToks and things like that. So again, trying to stay with the trend and what the young people are interested in. Um, we've done challenges every week. One of the ones that has been really um, very popular, uh, administrators have done it, teachers and students, um, is this uh, photo that you'll see in the top left-hand corner, which is a virtual uh, portrait challenge. And so the idea is that uh, you lay, I don't know why you would have to lay, but that's what the challenge uh, that we, we started that you lay kind of on the floor um, and around you, you would put all of the items that are important to you or essential um, during uh, COVID. And, and just so whether, you know, it's books or whether it's uh, music or food, you can see in this picture, um, but you pick like 12, I think 10 to 12 items um, and you put them, you know, around uh, yourself. And so again, this is something that students can do. It's something that adults can do. Families can do. We've got a couple of them where families have submitted things together. Um, and then you offer some sort of an incentive um, so that again, you're, you're helping to uh, uh, have families participate. And I do believe that, um, you know, if your leadership, especially when principals and administrators and leaders get involved, um, it just, you know, is something, uh, you know, it encourages the families to participate as well. Um, we also typically do a love drive. Uh, it's our way of giving back to the community. Um, we usually do it in the winter, so from October um, to December. And again, we collect household items. We uh, donate them back to the communities that we serve. And so this, uh, because of everything that's going on, we did a spring love drive. Um, we uh, created art kits, arts kits um, with art supplies in it, um, with resources uh, for students to be able to work on some arts projects projects at home. Um, and we uh, collaborated. Collaboration, again, is really key with another organization um, who was distributing uh, food um, and at, at, you know, at the different food locations. And so we partnered with them and were able to um, deliver these arts kits to families um, as well. So again, just trying to, again, meet people um, where they were. And I mean, I, I won't say I was surprised, um, but the feedback that we got was really, you know, positive. Families were just so grateful. Um, again, I think it's tough um, for all of us, um, even as a former teacher, you know, trying to be at home and educate my children and again, work and keep my sanity. Um, it's a lot. So imagine people who don't even have, uh, you know, educational background. Um, they were just like, you know, really grateful for, for those items. The other thing we did is that we held a virtual family arts and crafts breakfast. Um, initially, of course, this was something that we had been working on um, year, you know, for the year uh, to have a big uh, in-person breakfast. And of course that had to be altered. And so uh, we did it on a Saturday. It was a virtual event. It was about two hours. Of course, you didn't have to stay on um, for the whole time, but we did um, a kind of a sip and paint. Uh, we had one of our teaching artists uh, who went through uh, a, a painting um, activity or exercise. We had someone come in and do yoga and meditation. Um, and so again, that was something that was really great, uh, even virtual, um, to be able to share with our families. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to touch on um, is we did a Giving Tuesday, um, participated in that a, a couple of months ago. But one of the things that, again, and I think this speaks to just 
figuring out kind of the community and the audience and the families that you're serving um, and what your organization does well, um, who you're connected to, what you can pull off, you know, really in these times. Um, we did a, a DJ dance party. And so, of course, this was a fundraiser um, for us. But we had five, um, you know, well-known popular DJs who were willing to donate their time and give back um, because it had to do with, you know, youth and impacting youth. Um, and we had a, a DJ party all day. And so, again, um, students were able to, you know, get on. And, you know, at nighttime, we had the old these but goodies so the parents could get on um, and enjoy. So I think, again, you just have to kind of uh, definitely, you know, think outside of the box and then also um, really think about the, the community that you are serving. And much like everybody else, I mean, again, the convening has been awesome. Um, we've created some resources, you know, to be able to share with parents um, so that they can have some supports at home. So this is the last and I really believe um, probably the most important strategy out of everything um, that we talked today, talked about today, um, which is what makes you unique. You know, what is it that your organization uh, really stands for? Um, what is it that's important to your organization? What makes you uh, stand out? Um, so I just want you to take a moment. Um, you can jot this down um, if you have something to write with. If you want to put it in the chat. Um, I would love to see or hear from anybody that's here about what makes you and you can be you personally, um, or it can be, you know, it, thinking about you, the organization that uh, you are representing and, and may possibly leading. Um, so in the chat, or um, if you would like to come off of mute, um, I think you have the ability to unmute yourself um, and just share something that your organization does that you believe is unique and um, helps you to stand out. Anybody want to share? Don't be shy, folks. <laughs> you know, share at work. This is, it might not even be, yeah, we have strengths, of course, maybe not, you know, because we're trying to figure this out for some of us. I'll use the collaborative as a case in point. We're just starting to embark on working with, uh, with families and parents and the full, you know, so really being part of the student's full experience. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is something that's pretty new for us, but our strengths are we know how to collaborate and bring in the right resources and always acknowledge that we're not the pros. That's why we have Dana on today. <laughs> <laughs> and you are the expert, even though you say you're not mm -hmm. uh, on this work. Um, but that's certainly, you know, from our perspective, that's that. And I know Joanne, Joanna just shared something. Um, okay. That. Let's see here. Joanna says that uh, she's small enough of a school where everyone knows all the students and the parents. Yeah, I think that's yeah. really important, right? That's a plus. And not every school can say that. So that's great. Yep. And then let's see. It, also in the chat, Roberta says, oh, good. We're getting some responses in the chat, actually. Um, Roberta says that uh, representing Smithsonian institutions and interpreting education for all ages, that is definitely a strength. Uh, but usually the, that you work through schools. And again, I think that's an important strength, mm -hmm. having that direct connect to DC students, these national institutions that are, um, there is a conduit and focus uh, for DC. Uh, yeah. For, you know, I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. Great. Oh, and, yeah, let's see. Another one? Yeah, there's another one from Linda Maxwell, which is the Anacostia Museum, which is the Smithsonian's only community museum, which is here in DC, in Anacostia, uh, says the Anacostia Museum collaborates with community partners for programs and exhibitions. We are a highly creative team with a small budget. Mm, I love that. Mm -hmm. Highly creative. Yes, that's awesome. Even with a small budget. can Highly creative can get you a big budget. <laughs> <laughs> a friend who was just sharing with me a couple of days ago, his mantra is that his creativity 
um, will lead to financial opportunities or something of that nature. But I mean, this idea, as long as we are creating, I mean, just from a fiscal perspective, you'll, you'll never go broke. As long as you're coming up with, again, um, ideas that meet the need, then that will, you'll, you'll always have money. <laughs> you'll, you'll never be broke. So um, I love that. Um, so great. I want to keep us going here and be mindful of everybody's time. So I just want to, and I will send out, I can send it to Tracy and, um, you and have her send, um, kind of, again, a, just an exhaustive, um, list of possibilities. I wanted to just share and throw out a few. I'm not going to show them, um, on the screen, but I'll just kind of call them out. If any kind of resonate with you, jot them down. Um, because then I will want you to uh, kind of steal them and, and expand on them or think of something completely different um, that you, you know, maybe sparked uh, through this conversation. So these are some other ideas. Uh, newsletters, um, again, virtual uh, breakfast, breakfast, brunch, coffee. We were just talking about the coffee clatch, right? Is that right, Lisa? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> coffee clatch, um, happy hours. Another thing that we've done again now, obviously for parents specifically, um, but we have a high school that we work with that every Friday, um, we do an, an IG live, um, and we do a happy hour. And so parents are on there with their, you know, water or wine or whatever it is. Um, and we are giving out parent engagement tips and parent engagement strategies. And so, um, again, you know, however, got to know the community that you're serving um, and what will appeal to them um, to get them the information. You know, my grandmother used to always tell me you have to put the cookies where the kids can reach them. Right. So, again, really wanting to make uh, the information accessible um, to all. So uh, curriculum night. So, again, all of this stuff is, can happen now virtually, um, but show, showcasing um, student work, uh, you know, incentives we talked about. So if you are able and have the capacity to give small gift cards is what we've done, a ten dollar gift card to Uber Eats or, you know, something else that uh, somebody may be utilizing even during this time, um, a family family lounge. So again, kind of playing off on this happy hour um, idea. You don't have to call it happy hour. You can call it a family lounge that you do every Friday from five to six or whatever it is uh, where families can come virtually and talk about the things that they're dealing with. You may have, you know, some folks on your team um, who are the social emotional experts or educators or whatever their particular role is to be able to provide um, support, almost like an office hours. But, you know, we want to, again, we, we like to keep it funky. So we're not going to call it office hours. We call it, you know, family lounge or something. Um, that hopefully is appealing. Um, Dancing with the Stars, uh, family movie night, uh, family game night. Again, all of this can can be virtual. We have to kind of you know shift um, our way of doing things. Uh, a family book club we've done before, um, where we you know select a, a text um, for really middle to high. Um, and, and adults that can read together. Um, and then now holding at virtual book club meeting um, where we can discuss the book and of course highlight some of the issues um, that the book and the themes that it focused on. Uh, a family fitness night where everybody can get involved um, and do yoga or do exercising. Um, a family trivia night. I don't know, again, um, if you all follow TikTok, but there is, and I, and I certainly don't follow it, but I've seen um, one recently where there's a person asking a series of questions of, you know, who's the strictest, you know, who can I get away with something, you know, and these kind of open-ended questions. And so the, uh, the parents or, or the, yeah, the parents are sitting in the chairs, the, the kids are standing behind them and they point, you know, to which parent. And so whoever's watching can see so something, you know, again, something fun, something light um, that we're connecting and, and building relationships, um, virtual field trips, paint and sips, uh, again, any challenges that you can come up with. Um, and then one of the other things that we did that I believe was really successful was a vision board. Um, and we did a family vision board uh, with, uh, with, with our families. And so um, again, we usually think of vision boards as an individual uh, concept, but this was a family actually working together uh, to create a vision board for their family and really think about um, what their family vision is. So now I want you to have kind of giving you some things, maybe again, um, to think about that you may want to implement or you maybe and probably already have um, some ideas that you've been thinking about. Um, you don't have to uh, say this out loud or, or add it to the chat, but just look at these questions 
Um, think about them, an idea that you have. Um, again, thinking about that why. Why do you think this meets the need? Why do you think this would resonate um, with families? And then um, thinking about, again, because everything is so immediate these days, um, the time, at least for me, moves so fast. I heard, I think Lissa said, I, I can't believe it's June, you know, next week. Like, when did that happen? Like, I don't understand. Um, so thinking about what do you need um, to get started, right? How can you begin to implement um, and activate whatever the idea is um, immediately. So we're not going to do the group discussion, but I am going to ask us to do one um, poll before we kind of close out here. Um, and I'll take any questions um, that anyone has. And that is thinking about what your idea is um, to create a hashtag. And let me get back to the next page so we can do the poll. Um, create a hashtag that describes your organization's goals or plans for family engagement based on this discussion. <laughs> Should be able to uh, use that same link. And so what would your hashtag be? For any, it can be overarching goal or plan, or it can be a specific event, um, experience, or opportunity that you're thinking about um, for your families. And just give it a hashtag. Um, and if you could respond using that same link. All right, so we got one person who's undecided. Anybody have any thoughts this far? Any any inspirations? Again, you can still ask questions. Questions, you know, are going to lead to more questions, but are definitely going to um, lead to an inspiration. <laughs> Hashtag put the cookies. <laughs> oh, yay. I love it. <laughs> Yes, Arts and Humanities for Every Family. I love that too. Great. I want to see family nights at the museum, right? Mm. Like family, family museum night where I loved your virtual field trip idea. It would be so cool for museums to, to set something up for families at night. Like kind of, I'm thinking of that movie like Night at the Museum where you sleep over at the museum. Yeah. yeah. Some sort of yeah. insider feeling thing. Is that being physically there? That would be cool. Yeah, we have a couple of theaters also, just again, everybody having to kind of revamp what they're doing. Um, a couple of theaters in, in Baltimore um, that are offering virtual uh, field trips or experiences to kind of uh, be able to get behind the scenes of the theater. So again, you know, there are many different ways we can look at this, but one of the ways, um, you know, trying to, to remain and be positive, I think, is that this opens, uh, this opens um, us up to opportunities that we didn't think of before, you know, and just ways of doing things that we didn't uh, think of before. Um, so great, great, great. So thank you all um, for participating in that. So I am going to, I know we are almost um, out of time, um, just leave the last couple of minutes um, for any questions, um, I know that uh, Tracy will share the deck um, for the presentation. I will also uh, make sure that, again, kind of that list that I was um, spitting out with just the different uh, ways that we're thinking about engaging. Some of them um, are in planning stages. Some of them are still in my mind, um, you know, that, that you'll get that list as well. Any, any questions anyone has? All right. Always was told as, as a teacher to make sure I gave wait time, <laughs> especially in this virtual world. Things are lagging away. Um, <laughs> Dana, so thank you so much for uh, the presentation. And yes, I will definitely share the deck and um, the list of uh, 
family engagement activities. Um, I'll put it in like a digest. I'll also share it with our community partnerships listserv. Um, so if anyone wants to be added to listserv or um, if you're new to us and want to be added on our email, our email list, I'll definitely um, do that. Uh, you can uh, email me here, I'll put that in the chat. Um, but, and, and this conversation was recorded, so we'll definitely um, share that out as well for people who couldn't make it today. Great, great. Well, thank you all so much. I really appreciate your time and um, the opportunity to share with you. And again, just keep creating, you know, keep inspiring our families um, and, you know, we'll get through this together for sure. All right, bye-bye. <laughs>